All right, so the next model that we're going to look at here is going to be the uh, laryngeal model. And what we're going to look at here with the larynx are the major anatomical structures. This larynx model doesn't have everything. It's not showing the muscles. It's not showing a lot of the ligaments and the membranes that are here, but it still does a pretty darn good job showing the overall three-dimensional um, view of the of the larynx. So let's go ahead and start at the most superior aspect of this model and what you'll notice up here is a piece of cartilage that can move. This would be the epiglottis. So we're looking at the anterior view in case you didn't catch that. This is the anterior view of the larynx and then we'll move it around. This is the epiglottis. This on the top here is the hyoid bone. Okay, the hyoid bone is what the larynx is basically suspended by, and then the hyoid bone is connected by ligaments up to the styloid process on the base of the, uh, of the, of the skull. The styloid processes, I guess I should say, on the base of the skull. Now, this right here is where we'd be able to find that uh, the thyroid hyoid membrane, so basically a whole bunch of ligaments that kind of connect the hyoid with the cartilage down below, but this cartilage right here is called the thyroid cartilage. So hence why it's called the thyoid, thio, hyoid membrane. So if your professor asks you to know that, no, now you do. This thyroid cartilage is a big shield that sits on the anterior aspect at that larynx, but it doesn't wrap all the way around, which you'll see here in just a second. And as you move inferiorly on this thyroid cartilage, you'll see that this shield ends up running into another membrane down here, another group of ligaments, which moves to the next piece of cartilage, which is the front aspect or anterior aspect of the cricoid cartilage. Okay, this cricoid cartilage looks really small from the anterior view, but on the posterior aspect, you're going to notice that the cricoid wraps all the way around, and it's going to become much larger on that posterior aspect. Now, this is uh, down here where the cricoid meets the next ring of cartilage. Well, this is the trachea down here. So this is the cricoid, uh, cricotracheal uh, membrane or ligament down here that connects the cricoid to the tracheal rings. But we'll see the trachea in another model and we'll focus on that there. One last thing that I wanna point out here is this kind of enlarged surface, which you can see relatively well from the lateral view. If this is the, the, uh, the, the thyroid um, uh, prominence or the laryngeal prominence. So this right here is what's enlarged in males and as that laryngeal prominence gets bigger, the vocal cords are going to be longer, and that's going to help with the frequency of sound from males being a little bit deeper than in females. So again, from the side view, you can see this laryngeal prominence right here. You can also see from superior to inferior, the epiglottis, the hyoid bone, the thyroid cartilage, which ends right here, and the cricoid cartilage before meeting up with the trachea. The cricoid wraps all the way around. The cricoid wraps all the way around. So this big piece of cartilage back here is part of the cricoid, whereas the thyroid cartilage stops. So now you can see the epiglottis, the posterior aspect of the hyoid bone, and you can see some other strange little pieces of cartilage back here. Okay, these strange little pieces of cartilage are actually connected by muscle. And these pieces of muscle that are going to help move these pieces of cartilage around are going to help change the size of the glottis and change the tension on the vocal cords. These are things like the oblique arytenoid muscles and the posterior crico, uh, the crico Hi. cricoid or retinoid muscles, these intrinsic muscles that help as they contract, they're going to move these. These are the ones that are called singer muscles. You know, a lot of people say they, they um, strain their singer's muscles. Those are the ones we're talking about. So if your professor asks you to see those, 
You can't see them on this model, but know that they exist. And what they're going to be able to do is they're going to be able to move these pieces of cartilage here. And the names of those muscles have to do with the pieces of cartilage that they attach to. So again, move from superior, epiglottis, hyoid, the posterior aspect of the thyroid cartilage, and the cricoid cartilage. But what are these strange little ones here? Let's go ahead and move this down so you guys can see the tips of these particular pieces of cartilage. Okay, the very tip here is called the corniculate cartilage. The corniculate cartilage. And you can see there's a dark blue line that shows the demarcation between this cartilage and the cartilage down below. The larger cartilage that you see down below is called the arytenoid cartilage. And that's why all the names of those muscles had arytenoid in them, because they're helping to move these arytenoid cartilage. Now, what you'll notice is that these pieces of cartilage, the arytenoid cartilage, is connected to the membrane down below. And as these pieces of cartilage are contracted closer together, that membrane fold enlarges. That space you see right there is called the glottis. Okay, and as we loosen the vocal cords, or tighten the vocal cords, we're going to change the frequency of noise coming through there. There is another piece of cartilage found inside of this system called the cuneiform cartilage, but this model does not show it very well. Okay, this model does not show the cuneiform very well. Cuneiform kind of sits within the membrane and you cannot see that very well in this model. So I do not ask my students to know the cuneiform in terms of be able to identify it on this model. All right, so that is the larynx. I think I went through all of the major uh, anatomical pieces that I asked my students to be able to identify on this model. You can't see the vestibular folds. Um, can't see any of the muscles and a lot of the different ligaments and membranes are also uh, non-existent. So, um, um, on the, the next model that we'll be looking at is going to be a uh, bronchial tree. So it's going to show the larynx on the superior aspect, but then it's going to walk through the trachea down into the bronchi.